please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the compound women's gold medal match. Time now for the compound women's individual gold medal match. Title up for grabs here in Shanghai, plus a spot in the High Under Archery Our World Cup final. Number one, representing Great Britain. Ella Gibson. <laughs> On target number two, representing the Republic of Korea. Cho Suha. The line judge for this matchup is Qi Shuxian Taipan. Rumesh Khan. So here we go. The 21-year-old Cho Su Ah from Korea is the world number 118, going up against the 22-year-old world number one from Great Britain, Ella Gibson. There's a very different look and feel to both the archers as they were introduced to the crowd here in Shanghai. Yeah, Ella, uh, I feel like this is slowly becoming her second home. Uh, being on a finals venue is something that she's getting used to, whereas uh, Cho Su Ah is gonna have to get used to this I think if she keeps up this level of shooting I think this is one-way traffic for Ella Gibson despite that confident introduction if there was any doubt I think that uh, first arrow from Cho shows she means business I love that she is uh, feeling comfortable enough to make her shot dynamic and not trying to, you know, keep it tidy or keep it uh, perfect. She's just uh, doing whatever it takes to get it in the middle. Perfect start from uh, Cho Su An. A way better shot there. Um, she seems to be dealing with it okay. Ella is. She shot a bad shot. Um, acknowledged that it was a bad shot. Uh, and now that she walks off the line, she's like, okay, let's reset. Let's start from zero and uh, you know give it my all to catch up for those of us that don't see all the detail that you see chef what made it a bad shot that second one it, i think it was just the rhythm was kind of slightly off and um, it's difficult to pinpoint where the fault was exactly but it, it just didn't seem to flow the same way that her shots normally do um, to truly know what was wrong with a shot like that, you need to kind of feel what was wrong with a shot like that. So, well, while we're talking about that, we see Cho's uh, perfect start, and what a way to start against the world number one, pulling out a three-point lead after three arrows. And, and I know it's early in the match, but this is already in Cho's hands. Well, obviously, uh, leading by three points is a very good scenario to be in, uh, regardless of who you shoot against. I feel like uh, in the semi-final of Ella, we saw her kind of thrive in the second half of her match, where she kind of she grew into her shooting. Um, and I wonder if that's going to be the case here as well, and if it's going to be on time.
That was a good, good fix for that long hold. Uh, there was a bit of a, like a, a wobble where she lost a little bit of tension, but then she recovered, which is, is not easy. Oof. One second left. Had to shoot that. Uh, couldn't wait any longer. You could hear Rio count down in the back. I think we're seeing a little bit of a little bit of nerves here from the Korean um, because the the last shot was slightly quicker um, and I think that's just her trying to not be in the same situation as the second shot um, but I think she she kind of forced it a little uh, she she forced it to go off quicker than the second shot uh, just because she didn't want to put herself in that uncomfortable situation of the, bees, the uh, buzzer beater the buzzer beater on the it's it's an interesting one because I think there's there's two elements to the pressure here for me the perfect start she set a really high benchmark, level, benchmark for herself, but also the fact that Gibson's first two arrows in particular in that end were bang in the center of the target in the extra. Yeah, you can definitely put some pressure on your opponent if, if you have an opponent that looks at what you're shooting and, and you know, takes that in. Um, because there's a difference in seeing what somebody's shooting and registering what somebody's shooting. Um, so if like whenever I was in a good mental state and I was shooting against somebody, I would see their scores, but I wouldn't do anything with that information. I would just do my own thing. Um, whereas if I was in a, a, a less of a <laughs> less of a strong oh. mental state, I would also look at their score and think, ah, oh, I need to I need to better better this. I need to be better than their score, and that doesn't help you at all. Um, Trying to be better than somebody else doesn't sure. necessarily help. It's a miracle that you archers aren't all completely bonkers. <laughs> that, that, that's what you're saying. <laughs> but it, 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 yeah, you, you, sure. you're, you're discussing and talking about um, the the real key to this sport. They c these the, these athletes can all shoot. 10 after 10 after 10 in training it's handling the pressure of competition and specifically of match play. yeah i think people who truly master the um competition side of archery um because like you say there's two different kinds of archery you can uh be really good at being consistent in like a training setting you can be like a super high scoring archer in trainings or you can win competitions and some people do both uh look at Brady Ellison, for instance, or uh, people like Sarah Lopez or Mike Schlusser or, um, you know, any of the big names. Um, but winning a competition is not the same as being able to shoot a small group because you need to have a certain mental performance side of you uh, to block out what's happening around you or not necessarily block out, but not letting it get through to you. Um, and that's something that I have always uh, struggled with in a sense that I felt like I was never good enough at that. Um, and I think there's a lot of archers that have a really high scoring uh, ability, but just they, they cannot really uh, translate that to the finals venue. Hack the pressure yep. of competition. Well, uh, whilst you're talking about that, someone who is handling the pressure brilliantly is, uh, is Cho Su Ah. Uh, she shot a 30 in the first, 28 in the second, and then another 30 in the third. And she is broken away, I have to say, from uh, Anna Gibson. And breaking away like this also means that you get less pressure because you know that you can afford to shoot a nine every once in a while. You can make a mistake. One. Yeah, and, and being able to make a mistake or not having to uh, shoot a perfect score to stay ahead also means that you're a bit more free on your shooting and typically you will make less mistakes. Conversely, Gibson shooting first. I mean, she's got, in some respects, a little bit of an advantage because she can put down big scores and put pressure on her opponent. But she'll know she's looking for a mistake, Nine. and that's drifting no. out to the left. Don't think that's going to get marked for a measure. Ten.
So this is now five points of difference in five arrows. Ella just seems to be looking for something. She's like looking puzzled whenever she yeah. isn't sure. hitting the middle. Um, and I, I've been there and it's a very frustrating place to be. <laughs> Eight. Five. Well, you got to wonder what is going through her head. Is that the pressure of trailing by so much? Oh, ten, 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 another perfect from Cho Tzu Ah. Easy to say this at this stage, but there was a feeling about this one, having seen the two semi-finals, that Cho was really going to give Gibson a run for her money. She's doing more than that. Yeah, she's she's not giving her a run for her money. She's uh, running away with her money. <laughs> she's running away with it. She is indeed. And all of a sudden, she's just looking a little bit more relaxed. You saw her being introduced almost shy and, and, and or humble, I suppose, is uh, probably a, a better word to use when it, describing a, a Korean archer. But she, it almost looked a little bit awkward, the introduction. And now there's a fizz and a, and a, and a, a bounce in her step. Yeah, and, and rightfully so. I mean, she is shooting a very high standard, uh, 118 out of 120, so a 29 and a half average. Um, it's just really high level shooting, and then uh, against the world number one, so and, and leading eight points uh, with three arrows to go. So, well, that's the look on the face of the eight scored from Ella Gibson. It's not the look. On on the face she wants to be showing too many people but uh, trailing as she does by eight points uh, what she needs to miss doesn't she yeah that's pretty much the only way that this is still going to be a match Ten. Gibson I want to finish strongly whatever Nine. what's difficult in Ella's shoes right now is that um well, we're all, we're guilty of it. Um, anything less than a first place uh, is almost a bad result for her, if you uh, look at it from the media standpoint. Um, but I think, like I said in the in the archery show, she made it into the top four again uh, for the second time in a row. Uh, she won the European uh, Grand Prix, so she's not having a bad season. But um, I think she holds herself to similar standards than uh, as the media does so that puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders ten, ten, ten. Perfect score. Well, she does finish strongly with a 140 out of a possible 150 but comfortable Nine. here for There's Cho Su Ah from Korea and a very Ooh, impressive performance team. indeed a 146 a clear win for the Korean and uh, a first win on the individual stage for Rio Wild, the new coach for the compounders from Korea. Not only is that gold and a debut gold medal for so the Cho Su Ah, but it's also booked her a spot at Hermosillo in the Hyundai Archery World Cup final. I mean, it's a huge result for Korean compound archery. It is indeed, yeah. Um, this is going to be... Uh, yeah. Is it not the first time? No, not the first time that a Korean archer uh, in the compound women's division... No, definitely not the first way. time, but it's the first time she's done it, and it's the first time Rio Wild has done it with a Korean. Yeah, good point.